Torah, Pashas Truma, there's only one Maimur, one and a half my bottom. So, page 158. Me the Pasi that says, the Yidin say to Hashem, oh, if you would only make me like your brother. And he says, This is the request of the Yidin to Hashem as man In the time of Golos, that they're saying, Hashem, please treat us again like a brother. Uh, today's class is sponsored by Avram Aradian. For good things. Look very good things. Because in the time of the Beis HaMikdash, they even were called Achim Lamokim, they were called brothers. So now, in the time of Golos, when we're not brothers, the Jews are saying to Hashem, Oif, we would only be like your brother. Like it says, which means, When are the Eden called the brothers of Hashem? Bizman she basin mikdash kayim when the basin mikdash was existing. The vik of mevakesh is achshav. Therefore, in the time of Golos, the Eden requests from Hashem, "Mi itan chok achli, who will be like a brother to me?" So he says like this: What is how do brothers get over here? So he says, "Vinyan dine bekruvim shayu basin mikdash, the kruvim that were on top of the oven in the basin when the mishkan the basin mikdash." It says, Ufneem ish el ochiv. They looked one to, an, one to the brother. So you see in the Kruvim, they're called brothers. The Enex, if you see, Kruvim. You should make two Kruvim, Kruv, Echomikotza. One Kruv on this side of the Oren, another Kruv on this side of the Oren. Together you have the Kruvim. The Enex, the Kruvim. So we need to understand like this. The Kruvim are called brothers. So let's understand how the Rebbe says what the level, what the concept of Kruvim are. In a Kruv in Yuvin Api Masha Kosvet El Zavu, the Gemara says in Chagiga, I know Pnei Kruv, I know Pnei Odim Api, Rave Viva Api Zutra. The Gemara says in Chagiga that the face of the Kruvim were faces of human, one big face, one little face. He makes it al dmus haki se dmus kamara adam. So in the parts he can say like this: in the in the throne of Yechesko, that we read after on the first day of Shavuos, it says there's on top of the chair is a vision of a person. There's adam shalakise, right? So the Alter Rebbe says in Sarach Lahavin, shari enli dmus haguf. Hashem, who does refer to adam and and the kise? It refers to Adam Ali and Hashem. But Lachayna, how can you call him a person when the Ebrister has no uh, I- 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 form of a body? I mean, you put in human terms in Hashem. There's a man sitting on the throne. I mean, you know, yeah, it refers to Hashem, but how can we call him Adam? So then the faces of a big face and small face, or a boy and a girl face, that's not proven. It depends which madras you're looking at. The Gemara Chagiga says two faces. One big, one small. That's all. Actually, the size is small and big, or it means something else? No, physically. The crew were physical. Physically. But it represents something else. Yeah. Right. Are we getting to that? We'll see. At the end of the week, ask me if we got there or not. <laughs> the, Indian, the Indian is like this. So we need to understand what is this concept of brothers, what is the concept of Kruvim, what is this concept that there's an Odom Malakise uh, when Hashem has no form of a body. Teira is called Odom. Why? Like it says, Zei Satera Odom. The beginning of Pashas Chukas, the Torah says, Zei Satera Odom Kiyamuz Ba'ayil. But the Pasuk says, Zei Satera Adam. So Tater is called Adam. Uksiv, and like it says in another Pasuk, Zei Satera Sa Adam. This is the Tater of a person, meaning Adam is called Tater. So what does it mean? The explanation of this is, Kini Amir Azal, Kol La Tater, Kula Shmeitz, Shalak Arish Baruch. The Gemara says, that all of Teda, as in every word of Teda, is the names of Hashem. 
ובזה נקרא אס אס פירס, ואינזיה, the ten פירס, are called רוזה דשמא קדישה, the secret of the holy name. So we have like this, all the, letter, all the words in Torah are the names of Hashem, and the ten Svidas are called the name of Hashem. The Indian is like this. We have an example, Kamei Shem HaOdom, Shenikra Avram Yaakov. Somebody has at least explained it now, what is names? You say, Torah is the names of Hashem, that's the Svidas are the names of Hashem, what does that mean? So he says like this, if a guy has the name of Rama Yaakov, no, he leaves out Yitzchak, I don't know. The name is not relevant to the essence. You are a human being, whether you have a name or you don't have a name. There's no difference in you if you have a name or you don't have a name. What is the essence of the person? His intellect, and his emotions, that is the person. Because then, if a person's alone, nobody else is around, he still needs his intellect and emotions. But, but a name, if you're all alone, you don't need a name. It's only the external level the only thing that's good for a name is that when somebody calls you, so when you're identifying with somebody else, like we learned many times, then you need a name. But that's not the person. Yeah, the person's whole essence turns to you, but it's not, if he's all alone, he doesn't need a name. So therefore, what does it mean, a name of Hashem? What does it mean, the name of Hashem? What? Yeah. Like Yaakov has an energy of Yaakov. So if the person doesn't have a name, there's no energy for him. The name is there. The energy is there. Let me ask you, until you give a baby a name, the baby is alive? Yeah. How does it live? It, it, the name is not revealed yet. When you give a name, it's revealing the lifeline, but it's not making the lifeline. In other words, when a person has a name, Yaakov, so then the lifeline is through the letter Yud and I and Kuf and Beit. But even if you don't have the name, the Chayis is coming down there. Except you have the Nevoah, the prophecy of what it is. It's like, there were stories going on about the Rebetzin. When the Rebetzin, Chayimushka, was born, she was the second child of the three, the Rebbe. The Rebbe Rashab was out of Lubavitch. He was not in the city when, he, when she was born. So the Rebbe Rashab sent a telegram to the Friedrich Rebbe that if you didn't name her yet, I want you to name her Chaya Mushka after the wife of the Tzemach Tzedek. Tzemach Tzedek's wife's name was also Chaya Mushka. And he said, even though that's not normally done because it's a prophecy given to the parents, it's a prophecy given to the parents, but he said, it's appropriate her name should be Chaya Mushka. So he named her Chaya Mushka, we didn't name her yet. But I'm saying that, that, but normally it's a prophecy here, the Rebbe Shab had the prophecy, but it's the prophecy given to the parents. But without the name, even if you don't know your name, uh, people don't know their names, right? That's how many people, how many Jews don't have a Jewish name, they don't know the Jewish, that doesn't mean they're not alive. So the, the, the revelation of a name is only to identify with somebody else, even though the lifeline does come down. But when, when you call somebody after someone, the characteristics of that person will affect the child? It is all interconnected. For instance, anybody in the world that has a name Avram has something in common. Any person that has a name Yitzchak, Yaakov, Shmuel, Yaakov, I mean, uh, Moshe, whatever. <clears throat> any, peop any two people that have the same name, especially if it's exactly the same name, have something in common. Now, you can have an Avram that's a tzaddik, and you can have Avram that's a Russia, but they have something in common from the Neshama. In fact, there was one time a Sikha, when he speaks about the five Talmidim that Rabbi Yechim and Zakai had, you know, in Pekiovis, 
So one of them was Rav Shem ben Nisanu. And then the Mishnah says that he told them to say, each one to say something, you know, which is the best path. So but it says Rav Shem ben Aymer, which is really Rav Shem ben Nisanu, because that was the name earlier. And the Rebbe spoke a whole sicha by Febrengen that Rav Shimon is Rav Shimon by Yechai. That's a Teirosim Nasi, and therefore he says about davening, don't make, you know, when you daven, make it, you know, whatever. So everybody, uh, what's going on, it says clearly in the mission of Shimon ben Nisanu. So everybody was writing to the Rebbe, you know. So next Febrengen, the Rebbe said, Obvious. First of all, he, he spoke how stupid the, was, the way everybody asked the question. They didn't ask it normally. Everybody asked the question like this, you know. But the Rebbe said, it's obvious it's Rav Shem ben Nisan. So the Rebbe said then, there's a din in, in, in Shulchan Aruch, that a Rebbe is allowed to make an intentional mistake to see if the students are listening. Ah. That's what the Rebbe said. There's a din in Hilchot Tamad that a Rebbe can make a mistake intentionally to see if they're listening. Then the Rebbe said, but still, I said Rabbi Shimon ben Yechai and I explained it. So the Rebbe said, all Shimons obviously have something in common. So Rabbi Shimon ben Yechai and Rabbi Shimon ben Nisan have something in common. Then the Rebbe showed from Gemara and from Zayar that Rabbi Shimon ben Nisan was also the same level of Tehrasi Nasi like Rashbi. So the Rebbe said, what I said about Rashbi applies to him also because it was the same level of Torah, you know, he only didn't daven, he only did, you know, Torah mitzvah. But the Rebbe said, so over there again, the Rebbe explained that every person with the name Shimon have something in common. Right, when the grandfather is Shimon and there is a child, we're going to say, we're going to call this child in the name of this grandfather. Would this child Get any characteristics of I told you, like any two people with the yeah, same name. Two people, yeah, That's that no. I have a bigger question. If somebody, the, the Midas are in the heart, yes? If somebody gets a heart transplant, do the Midas change? Good question. No, they do pigs. <laughs> I don't know what the answer is. I mean, I know a few people that heart transplants. I don't know. There are instances, but they, they, they got, they got I heart transplant. I don't know. They just I don't know. You do know. No, I know I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the heart changes. That's a physical. That's a physical. <laughs> what about the ones who get a pig transplant in the heart? Watch it. Stick around for a little while. Watch what happens. Okay. See, he says like this. Um, okay. Kach. So therefore, like this. So what is the purpose of a name? The way a person is turned, it's an it's external thing, the way you identify with somebody else. So therefore, what does it mean that ten spheres are the names of Hashem? Kach al Therefore, compared to Hashem, even Chach Me'ilah, even the level of Chach Me'vatzilis, how much more so than me this from above has no connection whatsoever to the essence of Hashem just like he said the, the name of the person has nothing to do with his essence right the same thing the spheres which is called the names of Hashem the Zayar says the essence spheres are called the ten names of Hashem there's no connection whatsoever between the name, meaning Chochmah and Hashem. Um, that the essence of Hashem is infinitely greater than the level of Chochmah. So why is the ten spheres called the name of Hashem? It's only a revelation which is totally irrelevant, meaning like this. Just like when you call a name, somebody turns to you. How does Hashem turn to world, i.e. connect the world, sustain world? That's through the name. But it has nothing to do with the essence of Hashem. It's the way Hashem identifies with world. Hashem 
when you say the names of Hashem, you're talking about the identity. Again, name means to identify with somebody. The way Hashem identifies with world, then he's called a name. But the essence of Hashem is nameless. That's why when Meshach Rabbeinu asked Hashem, what is your name? So the matter says, it depends what I do. Meaning, do I identify with world? That's what I'm called. What? So when we call his name, he turns to us? Yeah. Unless he's a teenager, then they don't. What? A little louder, sir. I'm not sure I got it. Can you repeat or expound? On what? On, on when Hashem calls us. No, Hashem doesn't call us. We when call Hashem's him. names represent the way Hashem identifies with world. Right. That's all. What's all about that? But the Pasik says, Hashem Bachachma Yasa, there's a lot of Pasuk Hashem Bachachma. I know Shigili or Zu, Shubachina Shem Avaya, that Gili, which is the name of Avaya. Like it says, Ani Avaya Hushmi, that's the level of Chachma. So in other words, like this the tense fetus is the way Hashem identifies with the world. The initial identification of Hashem is in the attribute of Chochm, because it's the highest. Chochm is Bittu. So where does Hashem identify with? The level of Chochm. And then from Chochm, it goes into the other nine spheres. Like we know Chochm and Tabin and Tadas and so on. Like it says, Ukhme Shekosov, I'm sorry, Vaidea Chochm, Ninshech Achagal, Bechol Tesfiris. Commissioner calls it like it says the Tam in Tanya. Now, the Rebbe in Tanya explains the reason because Chochm is Bittul. And therefore, where does Hashem rest? In the level of Bittul. Therefore, the level of Chochm is called Adam because of Nikra Adam Adishin. It's called Adam Adishin. Why is it called Adam Adishin? Adam Adishin because it's the first level of name, right? The first place where Adam reveals itself is in, in Chachma. Because Chachma is racious. Chachma is called, in fact, Bereshis Barlakim, Uncle says, Bechachma Chachma is called racious. The manifestation of the Nisham in Gov. When the Nisham reveals itself in the body, where is the primary place of the revelation of the Nisham? It's in the head. Where does the neshama primarily reveal itself? In the head. And then, So in other words, Elokos reveals itself initially in, in, in the head. Just like, where does Elokos reveal itself primarily? In the level of Chochmah. Where is Chochmah the person's brain? Is Chochmah being adas, the seichel. So where does the neshama primarily reveal itself? Dr. Rebbe explains in Tanya at great length. is in the level of the head. Huh? They don't have a head. Adam Kadman is the first level of Elokos post Simpson Marishan. But that's also the level of the initial worlds. The pearl, there's a lot of different levels of Adam. There's Ak, it's called Adam Kadman, which is the initial revelation of Alukus after the Tzimtzum Adishin. Here, Dr. Rebbe is talking about the level of Adam is the level of Chachma. Okay? Because Chachma is the initial place where Alukus is revealed. Yeah, Hashem gave him the name Adam. Look in the book, sir. 
Huh? His mother-in-law didn't name him. Um, huh? That's why he lived long. Therefore, so the Alter Rebbe is explaining like this. Say Tatus Adam, Adam is called Chachma. Tatus is called Adam. So he says, because what's the love of Adam? Adam is the love of Chachma. Right, the initial place where Alukus is revealed. Where is the initial revelation of Alukus? The initial revelation of Alukus is in the level of Chachma, in Tatus. So therefore, Teira is Shmeis of Shalakarish Baruch The initial revelation of Elokus, which is the level of Shmeis of, is in the level of Teira. But Ramach Mitzvah says, say, Ein Ramach Ivarim. And the 248 positive Mitzvahs are 248 limbs. Vishasah Leisa said the 365 negative commandments, Shasah Gidim is 365 ain't. You know, it's very interesting. The Rambam in Nagdam of Sefer HaMitzvahs, Right, there's, everybody knows, the Gemara says in Marcus, there's 248 positive, 365 negative, right? So the Gemara says, I mean, the Rambam says, 248 corresponds with the limbs of the person, and 365 correspond with the days of the solar calendar. That's what the Rambam writes in the Akdama of, Peter, of Sefer HaMitzvah. In Arizal, it says that the 365 is Shasag Gidin. The 365 veins, sinews, whatever you want to call them. So it's interesting, the Rekabalot calls it the veins, and, and the Rambam in Nigla calls it the level of the uh, days of the solar calendar. What does the days of the solar calendar have to do with belief? The Rambam says that every day, the Rambam says, every day of the year it says, don't sin on me. <laughs> there is a voice. Every day of the year, because solar calendar represents the Goyesh calendar. That represents goyishkeit, which means sin. In the person, it means sinning. So every day of the year, it says, don't sin. Don't sin with the, my, the goyishkeit with me. And he says, <clears> the <throat> And learning is greater because it brings to action. Because from the brain comes the life of all limbs. And therefore, that's why Teira is one with Hashem. Because what is Teira? The revelation of Hashem. That's why it's called the names of Hashem. It's revealing the, the essence of Hashem. So when we're studying Torah, we're actually calling His name. Correct. That's why the Gemara says, Kala Keira V'Shayna, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Keira V'Shayna K'Negdei. When you start learning, Hashem is learning opposite you. What does that mean? He's not sitting there in the in the, in the chair with a pillow. Where, you know what I mean? I doubt it. What it means is, when you learn, you're revealing Hashem to you. That's why it says in Svarim that you say, let's say you're quoting Rabbi Akiva. I'm Rabbi Akiva. You know, yeah. Rabbi Akiva is excited. His, his mouth is open. And then you say something stupid that he never said. <laughs> He can't say. <laughs> he, he, he's stuck. <laughs> he, Why he didn't say that? Yeah, I mean, keep it probably said more than that. That's strong. 